Prevention Outreach is a nonprofit organization that is committed to community um, in the form of empowering community, con helping community to be connected with one another and other safe organizations and um, and uh, we are also about supporting community members, uh, LGBTQ plus community members. Whenever you have an organization like ours, um, funding is always going to be your biggest challenge, finding someone mm -hmm. to get on board with you and, and support your college regardless. Mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for more people who are, are just as passionate about doing what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the majority of, uh, of funds that we've received have been private, mm -hmm. um, so they're not uh, grant-based except for one. Um, and so the rest of the time, the, the money that we receive comes from community members, mm -hmm. which is why we, another reason why we're so um, uh, completely dedicated to not put it in our pockets, but to put it right back into our community. It's our community's money. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we put it back out. But because we are dependent on private funds, and funding is always gonna be an issue. Even if we didn't have the funds, we have all, paid for things to happen ourselves. We have, we have taken our own money um, and put it into whatever it is that we're doing. Um, because again, if the money isn't there, we're still gonna try to make things happen because it's necessary. Yesterday, actually, we were yeah. out in the community working uh, one of our local markets out in South Knox, um, and we met a few people that, uh, even if they hadn't benefited directly from from us, they've been following us on social media and kind of keeping up with what what we're doing, and it's given them a spark of hope and a sense of community, even though they may not be out in that community. And so, as we continue to grow and hopefully move some of our virtual stuff to in-person stuff now that we can, uh, we hope to inspire that and, and bring that more to the community as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice to have those small reminders, mm -hmm. even though you can tell yourself over and over again, it's nice to have that you're not alone, yes. you can reach mm -hmm. out and someone is always there for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, I think, is when I put up that box because I was thinking about how alone our community tends to feel in the first place. Then we have a pandemic where we're being told to pull away from ourselves, yeah. each other, and and uh, sometimes all we have are those moments where we get to meet and and see that we have any kind of visibility out there in the world and with that being taken away I was like there's got to be a message that we get out there that says you're not alone we're here um, and for kids and teens in this area that is so much more important because they already struggle and it's going to be that much more important as laws in Tennessee change that have been targeting kids. It has been so detrimental to think about. And as I've been working with families who are now dealing with these laws that are changing and their fears, um, letting parents of kids know that they're not alone when they're not even LGBTQ+, mm -hmm. but they are the parent of a kid and they feel so isolated that when they see that message um, for them knowing that they're not alone I've helped parents get connected with each other and that has made a huge difference mm -hmm. because talk about loneliness they're really feeling lonely just being involved with this organization um, has, has been rewarding in itself. Um, being able to put myself more in the community than I normally would um, 
is super fulfilling and rewarding. That's one of the reasons why I, I joined the organization. I saw what they were doing, I saw what they were about, um, and I just really wanted to be a part of that. Well, for me, as the president and the founder, one of the most rewarding things has been to see the board members um, feel empowered and feel connected and supported. Um, and uh, feel happier. I've noticed with a number of board members as people deal with their own personal struggles as they're trying to help other people that over time after spending any amount of time doing this hard work uh, there's there is a different look on their faces that happens. Um, and so that's been, for me, that's been rewarding. I would say that in addition to doing the work that we're doing, which is super fulfilling and super awesome, I feel like we've built, I mean, I'm relatively new too, but we've built a very accepting, mm -hmm. very open, very welcoming mm -hmm. community within us. Mm -hmm. um, so even if someone may be struggling, mm -hmm we're able to support them and continue to nurture their ideas and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in turn affect our community. So mm -hmm. just us being able to run in that kind of system mm -hmm. is, is really great. Mm -hmm. and, and to see people overcoming some of those internalized phobias like uh, biphobia, um, uh, watching one of our board members uh, uh, go through the experience of oh wait I do belong I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not the the um, the myths that people say that I am so seeing them overcome that as they're fully accepted that's been very very rewarding um, and so that I think that tops. But that's because I'm personally I, I see that so frequently. I, I sure. fortunately get to see it frequently with the board members um, that have come and gone and, and stayed with us. Um, but additional uh, rewarding experiences have been seeing f families. Uh, get connected and build their own communities, mm -hmm. getting necessary things to people. Like there was a couple during the pandemic that um, they weren't getting paid because they were too sick to work um, and getting groceries to them and paying their bills for them just so they could continue to survive. And, and seeing the relief, I mean, that was, a, a, that was just a, a blink of a moment in time, but helping people when th that they feel like there's nowhere else that they can go and no one else who will help them. And, and then them finding us and we step in and help absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and helping to keep our community from loss, yeah. Yeah. that's rewarding. As many people as we could give that breath of relief mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. I yeah. think that's, that's what we're most yeah. excited to do. And that's yeah. the most rewarding experience is when we can take something yeah. off somebody's shoulders. Yeah. yeah. see like mm -hmm. trans people thriving and out in their community mm -hmm. too and out yes. doing stuff for mm -hmm. trans people so mm -hmm. the board members that we have that identify as trans like mm -hmm. it's great to even have them mm -hmm. out there and mm -hmm. who knows mm -hmm. if someone will see them and be like I can do that too mm -hmm. yeah that the, I can do that too that's been another really important aspect of this work I, I've, I've wanted uh, our community members to see that they can do it too. It, it takes dedication and we all have it because we know what's at stake. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it, it is something that each of us can do and it, I think sometimes we, we 
feel like it can be too hard to get it together mm -hmm. and get something going, but I've seen over time how people have said, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. And then they get up and do it, like in Jefferson County, where they started, um, they were trying to arrange their own pride um, event. And again, right at the pandemic, had to be canceled. But that was such a monumental moment because in Jefferson County, they said, we can do it too. And I was like, yes, you can. Yes, you absolutely can. Monroe County, I've been hearing that they're, um, they're believing in their ability to get things going. And so uh, it's fantastic. That's also rewarding mm -hmm. yeah. to see more people. Yeah. See more people conquering that fear yeah. of like, who am I to go do this? Like, yeah. you're exactly who we need. Yeah, absolutely. Supporters, of course, are positive, uh, like what we do, appreciate yeah. what we do. Lots of thank yous, mm -hmm. uh, especially like being out in the community. They're like, thank you so much for being out here and doing what you do. It gives us all a little bit of hope, mm -hmm. uh, something I heard specifically yesterday. Um, so it's, it's always nice to hear that specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, feeling less alone. Uh, again, that has been uh, something that I've heard um, repeatedly. Um, so it's been positive feedback it, f from everyone, certainly not, but from most people, yeah. What's the negative pushback like? Do more. Oh. You're not doing enough, do mm -hmm. more. Okay. Yeah. We need more. Um, and and for the longest time, so I have a, um, a more than full-time job. I work uh, 12 to 14 hours in my practice. And then the extra time that I have, <laughs> which isn't much, I put into Appalachian Outreach. For the longest time, I, I was doing so much on my own to try and get things going. I mean, not by myself. I'm not trying to say that I was doing all of it, but um, but it's a lot of weight on it, on the few board members that were involved at that time. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and so the the feedback of there needs to be more. Um, I didn't take as negative feedback or a criticism. It was more like, we desperately need this. Yeah. And you're putting stuff together, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And so um, that that's the feedback that we've had. We need more, and we do need more. Literally. I think it's just the sense of urgency that that yeah. inspires to have yeah. these people responding so yeah. positively yeah. And, and craving and needing yeah. so much more. Yeah. Getting on that momentum of, we can see that it's possible, let's get it out there. Mm -hmm. And I think the fear has been, uh, once we have it, will it ever be taken away from us? And we're seeing that there are people who are trying to take away from us what we have fought hard for. Yeah. So I understand that urgency. And I agree. I feel, I feel that urgent need for there to be more out here as well. reached out um, to uh, two organizations, one of them being the, fortunately through some other work that I was doing in advocating for civil rights, I got connected with the FBI. I got them to come out this way to provide um, a, uh, an, a an educational hour about um, what a, how they define hate crimes, what to do if there's a hate crime, what the resources are, um, and so there have been a number of times where I've gotten myself connected with law enforcement to talk about these very issues because it's such a real concern for us. And in fact, um, I reached out to another organization about a possible opportunity to have our voice is heard and that uh, organization, it's an LGBTQ plus organization, said they didn't want to do it even though their name wouldn't be out there. They just are 
they are concerned about safety and that mm. is completely justified 100 percent. absolutely one one thing of pushback that i get a lot is well why do you have to be so loud why do you have to act like you're more important than everybody else and the plain fact is that we're not more important we don't think we're more important we are just tending to the house that's on fire we are looking at people in our community who are being harmed who are being mistreated who are having a narrative spoken about them that is completely false mm -hmm. and we are reaching out to those people and we are making sure that they are getting the bare minimum honestly of what they deserve and what they need yeah.